Here are the hound headlines that we are covering on today's episode. We have found Britain's ugliest dog. It's official she's been crowned and had the prize. We'll be talking about why some New Yorkers have to schlep their dog in their arms all the way down from a top floor apartment just so the dog can do its business. And we will hear about the veterinarian who adopts dogs her clients want euthanized and now her house is overrun with them. That and a lot more on today's special episode of Hound Headlines. I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in London, England. Welcome to our new show where we are going to uncover some of the things that you may have missed because we've been looking for a hound headlines. Claire, do you want to take it away first with some news from England? <laughs> yeah, it's a UK-based story. I have really mixed feelings about this one and I really want to know what you think of it as well. There's been a competition which is run in the UK. It's uh, being run by a printing company, so it's kind of a little bit of publicity for them. They set out to find Britain's ugliest dog and they, they have found her. She's a four-year-old dog called Peggy who is believed to be a pug Chinese crested cross, which is known as a puggies. No, don't and those Chinese crested often get the ugliest designation? I remember like other <laughs> ugly dogs. They tend to people don't like the way those poor Chinese crested dogs look. Oh uh, yeah, I haven't seen that many of them. They're slightly bald, aren't they? Yeah. That's that comes and from a little, the, the little fraggly yeah. hair. And, yeah, yeah. Well, th that's what Peggy looks like, and she's also got one of those tongues that hangs out all the time, like a lot of bracky dogs have. So it's it's not a winning combination, and I think it's fair enough to say she's not the dog that you would go for first in a dog shelter. I think I think that's fair to say. Um, yeah. So, but is that ugly or is it cute? Uh, well, well, you know, she's now claimed her prize okay. and she had a pamper session at a pet salon. And in fact, when the journalists were there and they sort of said to the salon owner, you know, what do you think of Peggy, the ugliest dog in the UK? And the salon owner kind of trotted out that line of, well, she's cute in her own way. That's, <laughs> that's a diplomatic answer, isn't it? So she won't but, be selling um, any dog food. So what does this crowning entail? What does the dog get Well, I think do? that was it, really. That was just... Okay. just a session at a pet salon. But I, as I say, I have very mixed feelings about this. What do you think of the whole concept of like a beauty pageant for dogs? It's slightly awkward, isn't it? Well, I think a beauty pageant is awkward in general, but a reverse <laughs> beauty pageant is just absurd. But yeah. I, I'm glad that uh, you guys are doing it there in England. <laughs> yeah, just you think the, you're glad that this is a British thing and not an American yeah, thing. Let's, I mean, skip, let's skip over the pond and go to New York City where we saw some headlines from, of all things, the New York Times mm -hmm. about people who live, you know, pretty much everyone in New York, unless you're really, really uber wealthy and you live in a brownstone, pretty much everyone lives in a tall apartment building. And many of those apartment buildings have dogs, allow dogs. That's all very well and good. However, some of the rules in many of those apartment buildings are that you cannot put your dog in the elevator or through the front hall, the lobby of the hotel. And instead, they have to sometimes be hand carried, which can get annoying, especially if you have a really big mm -hmm. dog in the elevator or go out through the service door or the service elevator. And it just seems a shame that if you're spending all those bucks to, to live yeah. in a New York apartment, you have to be treated like a second class citizen because you have a dog. And effectively, you never see all the grand hallways and the concierge <laughs> and the nice elevator and everything. You're kind of just going in the workman's entrance. You know, you were saying about how many um, people in New York live in high rise apartments. Isn't there a great statistic that I heard something about how if everybody who lived beneath the 10th floor in Manhattan was to go outside, that you would be able to stand up in Manhattan. I'm sure there's some mind blowing statistic about how, because there's, there's so many people living in dense housing that, you know, they couldn't all stand up in Manhattan. That's I never heard statistic. that. And of course, all their dogs, it would be because people, New York, I mean, one of the things that when I interview people on various shows on Dog Podcast Network and they're in New York City, I look for is the anecdotes, the stories about like, how does your dog take to the elevator? And yeah. most people have great stories, but it turns out, according to this New York Times investigation, and it was a very good piece, we'll have links to it in today's show notes, 
<laughs> there are a lot of people who just can't avail themselves of all the nice amenities and all the nice things. They, and, they, and it's kind of mm. crummy and they have to go in the elevators that are used to remove trash. And, and it's, it's not very nice. Mm. And I, I guess also some of those apartment buildings probably don't have to. Well, oh, no, I was going to say maybe some of them don't have two elevators. They have like a staircase and an elevator. I was just thinking about dog owners and whether they were going to get the sort of added benefit of the fitness of having to walk up the sort of service mm. stairs rather than using the elevator because they get the last laugh that way, wouldn't they? Because they'd be getting the exercise and the adrenaline and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, New Yorkers <laughs> like to be told what stairs. to do. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a really interesting idea. I have sympathy with the concept of, you know, if you had a lot of dogs shedding in the lift and then you were allergic to dogs and you were going in this enclosed space and going up a lot of floors and being trapped with all the dog hair, that wouldn't be great, would it? But it's also a shame that those apartment dwellers aren't allowed in those lifts. But yeah, yeah. They did Another contrast, headline didn't they, that, with... that we've been tracking is dogs and strong bites, it turns out. Yeah. Yeah. I confess, I haven't actually heard of the number one breed. I don't know if you have. Have you ever come across that the breed? Kangi. The Kangi? Kanji? I think it's a, a Kangal. I'm sure Kangal. somebody will who's listening will correct us if we're wrong on this one. I didn't look up the pronunciation for that, but I have to confess I looked up the pronunciation for the number two on the list and it's embarrassingly easy to pronounce. Do you know how to, do you know how to say ahead. that one? What, what are the dongs with the three strongest bites? So there's the Kangal, I believe it is, it's okay. got the strongest bites, which is um, it's a Turkish dog native to Turkey and used for guarding livestock and it has a 743 PSI pounds per square inch Per square inch. That's a, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. And then number two on the list, this is this is one I, I went into Google. I was like, how do you pronounce that? Well, literally as it looks, the dog de Bordeaux. That's how you say it. It's literally dog de Bordeaux. Would that be a French and, dog? Uh, although if, we're doing... if you were if you were trying to do French, the dog de Bordeaux. Like that. <laughs> so you can tell I spent time in Ottawa, can't oh. you? My French is just amazing. Yes, yeah, so you you just <laughs> were in Paris recently, so you picked up a lot. Oh yeah. 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 Do I um, believe it's so, do, do, doge? Do, do. Dog no, 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 it's not. It literally is it, it literally is the dog. Dog, dog de Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Hey, it's it's a dog yeah. from Bordeaux. They make some really good wine and evidently dogs that have the <laughs> second strongest biting aptitude with five hundred and fifty-six PSI. And yeah, then the, and the, the, Mastiff the Mastiff was number three. Which is what I would have which, guessed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I would have said, Oh, Mastiffs. I never knew about the Kangle and the and the dog from Bordeaux. But what do we do with that information? Not a lot, okay. because it turns out that most of those dogs, those three on the top of the list, they may have the strongest bite, but they're not actually aggressive dogs. They just have powerful bites. So it doesn't, it's not like, oh, don't ever get one of those because they're going to attack you. Yeah. That's not what it means at all. It's just they've got a strong bite, but they might not use it. In fact, the dog de Bordeaux, they said, is notoriously lazy. So it's probably <laughs> not ever going to attack you. It's that classic thing of, you know how they always say that the big dogs are the ones you don't need to worry about yeah. because they're always really friendly and it's it's often you know little dogs like those Maltese that come mm, and nip you yes. around the ankles. They have, yeah. they, they have very low PSIs, but I will tell you that uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes if you pet a Maltese from first-hand experience in the middle of the night and they weren't expecting it, you may get a little bit of that maybe, I don't know, 10 PSI on your fingers and it still doesn't feel good. <laughs> Now, t talking of sort of chillaxing, you know, mm. you, your image of, you know, laying in bed in the middle of the night with the dog and everything. I'm guessing you haven't. Have you ever come across an Udi? An Udi? Is, it, is that also <laughs> no. French? Udi? An Udi? U U Udi, Udi. No, it could what be, is an it? Udi? I don't know what an Udi is, Claire. Presuming this is a transatlantic trend and not just a British trend. I think this is, this is a worldwide thing. Okay. They're very... Big amongst preteen and teenage girls, and they're well, basically. You have one of those. Yeah, I do. So, so Alice got one for Christmas and given to her by her cousin, who is now twenty-one. The other day. Okay, we're eager um, to know those of us who are, are not. Sorry, don't sorry, sorry. What, what is it? it? Well, it's it's like a huge, very well insulated, oversized hoodie. And like okay. when I say oversized, like you could fit two people in the average one of them. It's, it's huge. And they have usually the ones for humans have like quite leery patterns on them, like loads of avocados on them or so loads like of dogs. So it's like 1980s. Or, it's like clothing that we might have worn in the 1980s, but a hoodie. 
with like a way oversized just yeah but sort of reinvented it's sort of not it's less fitted than a hoodie which is an odd thing to say because a hoodie's not fitted right but it's literally like a square <laughs> and another square sewn it's together with arms a lot of fabric. And, a, and a hood right. yeah and what does it's, this have to do with dogs <laughs> oh sorry there was a point wasn't there <laughs> So yes. spent so long explaining what they were, I forgot the point to this. Well, anyway, so they've been a complete success with teenage girls, and now they have made Udi's for dogs. Of course they so, Because <laughs> obviously dogs needed them. So they're sort of Sherpa fleece hoodies for dogs, but they're made by the brand, because everybody knows mm. who Udi is, and they're going to come in pink and blue and white and... The sort of the famous kind of material that they use. So if it's this, all this so excessive cynical. material, is the dog going to be like walking around with this stuff trailing and like fall over itself? Well, they're sort of no. They're kind of they kind of adapted the fit a bit for dogs, okay. so they're not as swamping. Yeah, that's but commodious. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could literally sleep in one of the human ones. So I don't think they can be as thick because a dog wouldn't need a fur coat and an udi. Those who have listened to me uh, pontificate about this, I have very strong feelings about the inappropriateness oh, yeah. of dogs wearing any type of clothing, much much less an, an udi. That sounds um, ridiculous. I, I, I can I can imagine this week that I'm going to find one on social media and I'll, I'll send you a picture of okay. a dog wearing an udi. Well, if don't I just send one. it to just me. We'll, we'll put it in today's show link. <laughs> so if you want to yes. see how wonderful slash ridiculous this is, you can uh, find it at, in today's show notes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what other stories have we got? Oh, oh, dogs. Dogs who've eaten things they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Dogs always eat things they shouldn't. You found so two, two... Two, two different articles, one from Belfast and the other from the Daily Mail in, in London, but they have mm -hmm. that common theme. So what kinds of things are British dogs eating that they shouldn't? Well, I'll start with the Daily Mail article. And just to explain, this is not my poor research. This is the Daily Mail's poor research. They're well known for their poor research, <laughs> by the way. They they quite often will print half a story. And so the reason I haven't got the other half of the story is because they didn't print it. So, so we're delivering a quarter a, of the story to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did go looking just to see if anyone else had covered it, by the way, but I couldn't find the other half of the story. So it's a Labrador who ate a £600 electricity voucher. The big screaming void of a question in this is why did they have a £600 electricity voucher? And I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, but they have been sent it by their company. The woman wanted to take it to, I don't know, the post office or something to like put the electricity on her electricity meter. I don't know. The Daily Mail doesn't tell me. And she stepped out of the room momentarily and the dog, the dog ate the voucher. I think it's, you, don't have to, you don't have to pay for it anymore if, if you don't have the voucher, the bill. You don't have to pay for it if the dog ate no, it. No, no, it was a voucher. It was, it, no, no, no. It oh. was like, it was money. Oh, it was a check. It was, it was a credit. Yeah. Oh, again, we all speak different English. A voucher. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't how much yeah. she owed the power company, but no. how much they were paying her. No, no, no. It was like, for some reason, they had sent her a credit of £600, which is a lot of money. It's a you know, lot of money. It's like almost $600 now. Uh, yes. That is a um, lot of money. And uh, the dog yeah. ate the money, and uh, would the power company reissue the voucher? So she went to, as I say, I think it's the post office that were kind of going to cash it in and put it on her account. Mm -hmm. And she literally went with the little bits of paper, and it turned out that the vital part of the bit of paper was the QR code, uh, oh. you know, yeah. so that they could scan it and get the details, and the QR code was intact. So all the rest of the letter was shredded, but the QR code, so they went, you know, beep, and then they got it in a whew, 600 pounds credit sorted. So there you go. And the other one was um, this dog, Luna, who um, is in a rescue shelter in and Ireland. This is a dog Did you see from this Belfast. One? So this is a dog who, in this rescue shelter, and was hungry and there was some dog food. And so the dog ate the dog food, but ate it in the tin. So ate the tin as well. It literally yeah. ate the tin. With yeah. the dog food, probably had a lot of PSIs in in his yeah. bite to, to get through the tin. Wow. Yeah, and so they obviously discovered this dog had had chewed through this metal tin and then had consumed it, and they needed to rush it off to a vet, and that ended up costing them twelve hundred pounds, fifteen hundred dollars to sort this dog out. And obviously, rescue shelters at the moment are under quite a lot of pressure 
any yeah. way financially. Well, dogs eat the darndest things. Maybe we should start a little segment on this show about dogs eating the darndest things. Yeah. So if you have a dog who's done eat, I mean, not we don't want to talk about like candy and all those things that are poisonous, but something that's a little crazy like a uh, a voucher, a check for 600 <laughs> yeah. pounds or all the way through the tin, let us know. You can get in touch with us at our website at dogpodcastnetwork.com. We would love to hear from you. Our final story today also comes from England. It's about a veterinarian named Sharon Williams. Tell us about Dr. Williams. Yeah, well, actually, in the UK, I don't think they're doctors. I think that's a US thing. They, they don't get to. They don't get the to wear that as their badge but they, of honor. The BS, yeah. the British Society, yeah, something like that. Society of yeah. Royal Medicine. Anyway, so tell us about a veterinarian named Sharon Williams. Yeah, so Sharon has obviously got a heart of gold because she has had, and particularly during the kind of the cost of living crisis, she has had, and, and after the pandemic, people coming in with healthy, younger dogs with minor health problems. So generally healthy, or they, but they've got a minor problem like, say, diarrhea, or they've got a behavioural problem. Mm. And they've been asking to have these dogs euthanised. And Sharon, bless her, has been taking these dogs on herself and running almost like a temporary rescue shelter for these dogs so that they aren't euthanized and she's now got 20 of them 20 dogs that she has acquired from people who basically didn't want to pay for the veterinary yeah. care or couldn't pay for the veterinary care and so she's rescued is she rehoming them well, that's the intention, mm. but I think, you know, <laughs> it's it's a struggle to rehome them, isn't it? And particularly with dogs with behavioural problems. So right. she's talking about dogs that have been bought, young dogs mm. in the pandemic, haven't been trained well. Maybe they couldn't find training classes because that was a problem for some people. And she was talking about one particular one. And I, I'm trying to think what the breed was. It wasn't a husky. It might have been a Malamute, something like that where they're high energy, they need a lot of exercise. And if they don't get the exercise, they are destructive. Mm. And this young dog had been destructive and then they're being brought in kind of, can you euthanize it? Which is awful, awful. She's also taken in a few other animals, by the way. Well, there are great souls like that, uh, veterinarians and people all over who are making lives a lot better for dogs. And we're grateful to know about this veterinarian. And we have a lot of stories about different people who are making a difference on various shows on Dog Podcast Network. You can check out all of our shows at dogpodcastnetwork.com and uh, hear some heartwarming stories about vets like Sharon Williams. And we would love to hear from you, by the way. If you are reading through the news during the week and you spot a story, just tag us on social media. That's the best thing to do. If you see something in your social media feed and you think, oh, they'd love that for Hound Headlines, tag us because then we will see it and everybody else will see it as well, which would be absolutely brilliant. And you can tag us at dogpodcastnetwork.com or the name of the show at Hound Headlines. Not at, hashtag Hound Headlines. <laughs> Still learning this uh, <laughs> social media I was stuff. Say, have you registered at Hound Headlines? I was like, wow, Jim, I didn't know that well, had happened. Well, yes, so, no. we do have houndheadlines.com. So that'll yeah, get you just here not, as well. Just not the username. So Anyone can create hashtag. a hashtag. It's easy. If you have enough yeah. PSI in your teeth, you can do it. <laughs> well, this has been fun, Jim. We should do this every other week. We'll try this out. We're trying this. Uh, we're give you a little insight into news because we read a lot of dog stories every week here at Dog Podcast Network. And we're saying, you know, that's a really good story. We can't cover it on one of our other shows. And so we're talking about it here on Hound headlines let us know what you think i guess we should figure out a way to wrap up the show <laughs> that's silence <laughs> that's the hound headlines for this week i'm claire mansell in london england and i'm james jacobson in maui hawaii on behalf of all of us here at dog podcast network i'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha <laughs> <laughs>